Welcome back. The FBI director testifying today saying it makes him, quote, mildly nauseous to know his disclosure of a new investigation into Hillary Clinton's email server 11 days before the presidential election may have impacted its outcome. But he also said he would do it all again. Look, this was terrible. It makes me mildly nauseous to think that we might have had some impact on the election. But honestly, it wouldn't change the decision. Everybody who disagrees with me has to come back to October 28th with me and stare at this and tell me what you would do. Would you speak or would you conceal? And I could be wrong, but we honestly made a decision between those two choices that even in hindsight, and this has been one of the world's most painful experiences, I would make the same decision. I would not conceal that on October 28th from the Congress. One of my junior lawyers said, should you consider that what you're about to do may help elect Donald Trump president? And I said, thank you for raising that, not for a moment, because down that path lies the death of the FBI as an independent institution in America. I can't consider for a second whose political fortunes will be affected in what way. We have to ask ourselves, what is the right thing to do? And then do that thing. We've got Brian Fallon with us, a CNN political commentator and former press secretary for Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign. Paige Pate is with us, CNN legal analyst and constitutional attorney, and Manu Raju, CNN senior congressional reporter. So great to have all of you with me. And Brian Fallon, let me just begin with you. You know, we just heard from uh, uh, Hillary Clinton herself yesterday, essentially saying it was because of Mr. Comey's actions that it cost her, and at least a third of the reason why she thinks it cost her the election. When you listen to that today, what was running through your head? I actually thought that Jim Comey had a rough go of it today. You don't often see him break a sweat at these hearings. He is a pro. Uh, he's very polished. But you saw him got rather animated in that clip that you just played. And I think uh, the senators asked some tough, fair, but tough questions. And I think he struggled to answer one fundamental issue, which is the double standard of the fact that he publicly acknowledged an investigation into Hillary Clinton at a very early stage and she basically campaigned for close to a year under the cloud of an ongoing investigation and he didn't make the same public acknowledgement at all with respect to the investigation we now know the FBI is still actively conducting with respect to mm -hmm. Donald Trump and allegations of collusions with Russia so if you ju even just put aside the letter that he wrote on October 28th put aside that infamous July press conference he just uh, going back way early in, in late 2015 he publicly acknowledged the investigation into Hillary Clinton never did that with Donald Trump he didn't have a good answer for why today of that hearing. Well, so it, it seems like part of the reason may be uh, the timing. And Manu, I want to bring you in on, on exactly what uh, Brian's question is. You know, why with the Hillary Clinton investigation, why not with, with then candidate or nominee Trump? And part of it, and you followed up with uh, Dianne Feinstein on the, the, feel, the fears of concealment. Talk to me about that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this was the, the concern that uh, the senators had raised, that uh, why did James Comey, as the FBI director, reveal uh, these emails uh, without actually going and getting a warrant first, uh, getting looking at the emails and then disclosing it later. But Comey's argument was that this was much earlier uh, in the uh, in that this, the, the uh, the Trump investigation was not nearly as advanced as the Clinton investigation. The Clinton investigation had been cl essentially closed in July, and he had an obligation to reveal this publicly in October when he would learn about these additional emails. I think it was very interesting also, Brooke, to learn exactly how he learned about these additional emails, that it was uh, from Huma Abedin, who had forwarded emails to Anthony Weiner that included some classified uh, information on that, and she simply was just asking Weiner to print it out to provide it to Hillary Clinton. Uh, a really remarkable chain of events that led to this decision to reveal this, and also Bill Clinton's decision to actually meet with Loretta Lynch Loretta on Lynch. that tarmac. Uh, right. That led Comey to believe that he had to publicly uh, reveal some of these things to show that there's transparency in the process or the fix wasn't in. Some Democrats did not buy that argument, but that was the first time we've heard Comey really shed some light into his thinking along this uh, investigation, Brooke. On the issue with concealment, we have some of the sound from his testimony and then your, your conversation uh, with, with uh, the Congresswoman afterwards. Let's play that and then Paige, I've got a question for you. 
when the Anthony Weiner thing landed on me on October 27th, and there was a huge, this is what people forget, new step to be taken, we may be finding the gold and missing emails that would change this case. If I were not to speak about that, it would be a disastrous, catastrophic concealment. It was an incredibly painful choice, but actually not all that hard, between very bad and catastrophic. I had to tell Congress that we were taking these additional steps. I prayed to find a third door. I couldn't find it. Two actions, speak or conceal. I don't think many reasonable people would do it differently than I did, no matter what they say today. If you were standing there staring at that on October 28th, would you really conceal that? So I spoke. I don't quite understand why he didn't get the search warrant before and s quietly and see if those emails were there, anything there. But he did not. That became clear. That to me is a major point. Why would you do this 11 days before without getting the search warrant quietly and taking a look? That he didn't want to conceal potentially damaging information. How, how would he be concealing it? He then announced that if there were damaging information there, he would announce that he was going to investigate. But he didn't announce, and there was no damaging information. So it was an important question from the senator and Page. What is protocol? I mean, you had these two ongoing investigations, both with regard to Trump and associates and in Russia, and then with Hillary Clinton and her private server. What's protocol in that sense, the fact that he could divulge one and not the other? Well, Brooke, I certainly agree that protocol in the normal case would argue against the FBI disclosing any investigation. You can acknowledge that there's an ongoing investigation, but certainly not disclose anything about that investigation. But this was not an ordinary case. That remarkable chain of events that Manu just referred to, that made this case unusual from the very beginning. James Comey was left with the ultimate authority, basically, to determine whether Hillary Clinton was going to be charged or not. It was also up to him to determine how how to respond to all of the public information that was out there about that investigation. And I don't think there was a double standard here. He confirmed the Clinton investigation at the beginning and then did not say another thing about it until he publicly announced that the investigation was closed. And as you heard him say during his testimony, he then had this mess basically dumped on his table with these new emails. And I disagree with the senator's argument about the timing. It's very different to disclose incriminating information versus the fact that there's an ongoing investigation. So before he sought the search warrant, he felt compelled to correct the record and said, this investigation is no longer closed because I have new information I need to look at. And he had no way of knowing at that point whether that additional investigation would have taken a day, a week, a month, or lasted into next year. And he additionally said he was concerned about the credibility of some of the, the, se the senior leaders within the DOJ, and that's why he went to those cameras that Manu referenced, um, because he was worried that they couldn't credibly complete the investigation. Right. I've got to go. Brian, 